Thank you, Ilana. Um, we will uh, hear now a talk by Maya Klein. Uh, Maya is a PhD candidate at the Shirley and Leslie Porter School of Cultural Studies at Tel Aviv University. Her research focuses on 20th century multilingual writers and the incorporation of translation within their work as an aspect of their ethical um, visions. Her study centers on writers who are also critics and translators, emphasizing the performance of translation within their works, as well as the ethical demands they place on the reader. Maya's talk is Literature, Ethics, and Cultural Heritage, a conversation with Hannah Wirth Nesher. Thank you. Very excited to be here. <laughs> Thanks. Um, also, I'm, I'm not yet a doctor, so thank you, but <laughs> it's a little too early. And um, this will be short and very personal as well. <laughs> In the spring of 2001, Hannah Wirth Nesher returned from Baltimore, where she had spent the fall term as visiting professor at Johns Hopkins University. At the time, she was a full-time professor at Tel Aviv University, and by then she had already published three of her books, co-edited three other volumes, authored dozens of scholarly articles and encyclopedia entries, and served as chairperson of the Department of English twice. As Hannah once said to me, I didn't do it all at the same time, but of course, we all know that she did. <laughs> Knowing none of this, that spring, I enrolled in Hannah's Introduction to Narrative Analysis class, along with about 90 other sleepy undergraduates. It was a requisite course covering the nuts and bolts of narrative, genre, plot, setting, and I believe I entered the lecture hall with about the same degree of enthusiasm that the rest of the students had. But one of the texts that Hannah had selected for our required reading was A Conversation with My Father by Grace Paley. It's a deceptively simple story that I love for many reasons, and I think it also offers a wonderful example of what literature can do. The story is narrated in the first person, and it presents a conversation between the, a daughter, Paley, and her ailing father. The father is hooked up to an oxygen tank. He offers last minute advice, and his request, or last request, is that she write, quote, a simple story, just once more, the kind Maupassant wrote, or Chekhov, just recognizable people and then write down what happened to them next, end of quote. The narrator tries to please her father by telling him a story, which is embedded within the frame story, but her various attempts fail to satisfy him. Father and daughter argue about character, plausibility, reality, the counterculture, and how to end a story. Frustrated by his daughter's irony, her sense of humor, and her unwillingness to leave her character in a desperate state, the father finally exclaims, and this is a quote, tragedy, you too, when will you look it in the face? And that's how the story ends. The manner in which Grace Paley manipulates form comes to light when analyzing the subtleties of her narrative. Paley casts herself both as the dramatized narrator in the frame story, the daughter, as well as the third person narrator in the embedded stories, the author. Therefore, when the embedded stories are altered and contested, such as when her father says about a character she created, I believe you that she was good looking, but I don't think she was smart. <laughs> Tensions arise regarding reliability, and these carry over to the frame story, the conversation which on the surface seems perfectly plausible. Paley is drawing our attention to the fabrication and the decisions involved in every element of artistic creation, including the conversation right down to the oxygen tank and the tubes in her father's nostrils. She unsettles the real story so delicately that we almost don't realize we have been caught in the web of fiction until the final lines about tragedy appear, abruptly severing their conversation. For Paley, not only does the way one chooses to tell a story reflect on the nature of their character, it is of real consequence. This is a life and death conversation. Questions of literary form are not merely aesthetic, they are ethical. Artistic creation is founded on these ethical choices, which are revealed in the conflict she sets up between father and daughter. 
It is on these grounds that the narrator cannot comply with her father's request to create a simple story. She despises linear plot because, as she states, quote, everyone, real or invented, deserves the open destiny of life, end of quote. Besides the irony of writing this in a fictional story, Paley also brilliantly undermines the statement about the open destiny of life, for in fact, what she has done is depicted finality, the death of her father, thereby fulfilling his request and looking tragedy in the face. The brilliance of a conversation with my father is that she has done so both by telling the story her own way and by giving the father the final word. This story brought literary analysis to life for me, and it presents much of what still interests me so many years later, how an attentive reading can alter textual interpretation, and one of the important ways in which literary discourse and ethics intersect. The story also relates to my experience studying with Hannah. In a conversation with my father, the conflict between father and daughter does not merely concern the difficulty of facing death, it is also a generational battle, perhaps a gendered one too. It's fought on literary grounds. The story presents the notion that creation, excuse me, that the creation of literature involves grappling with one's predecessors, taking on real and invented fathers and mothers, and forging a path as a writer in relation to one's cultural heritage. Hannah has a deep commitment to the preservation and the understanding of cultural heritage. And I think that this has to do with an ethical vision similar to Paley's, the contemplation of a matter that is as simple and as profound as how we tell our stories and what stories we have been told. Finally, and relatedly, studying with Hannah has taken the form of a long and ongoing conversation the breadth and depth of her knowledge is matched only by her generosity and willingness to share it, whether in a lecture hall with 90 undergraduates or meeting individually with doctoral students, she extends the same generosity and attentive ear to everyone. Hana is always willing to engage in conversation. It is the, in this spirit that she guides her students, and I am extremely fortunate to be one of them. Thank you. <laughs>